We have a close call for you today and another way that your tractor can kill you. This guy, Mike, escaped with his life, fortunately. So it's got a happy ending on it, but there are some lessons to be learned. And again, it's gonna show you how quickly disaster can strike. It's just waiting to hurt you at any moment with a tractor. Well, like most things in life, but in particular with tractors, because you just have no idea how these different load points and weights and taking certain weight off or lifting weight or whatever it is can change things dramatically. Even if you just went from point A to point B, you take something off your tractor, you unload it. Anyway, the point being, let's watch this clip here. I really appreciate this. This is uh, Maintenance with Mike. That's the channel name on YouTube. 444 subs. Let's see if we can get that number up. I feel like if a guy is going to go ahead and put this kind of information out there, he keeps his composure. He does a good job recording it. It's easy for other folks to sit there and, and pick somebody apart. You know what? It takes... This is the kind of stuff that can help save other people's lives. It can save them grief, can save them headaches, you know, and struggle and learn a lot quicker. And you may not have thought about it. He didn't think about it. So I guarantee there's other folks out there that haven't thought about it. It doesn't mean that they shouldn't operate a tractor. Okay. You don't know unless you try. And, and fortunately, a lot of us have gone through things like this unscathed. But if you own a tractor long enough, you're bound to do something stupid with it. You want to minimize that chance whenever you can. Let's check this first part out. And, uh, and we'll talk about it. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Maintenance with Mike. So today you can see we're definitely layered up. Uh, it's uh, minus two now in uh, southeastern BC today. We're also going to bring the uh, tractor up and uh, we store our loader for the tractor inside the sea can for the winter time because the snowblower goes on the tractor. So anyway, let's get started. This was the exact moment I had realized I had made a very rookie mistake. The tractor was just refilled and fill, full of fuel. And with the backhoe on, it was just too much weight. And this is where the tipping began. sitting in the back of I was afraid of that so that's a very good lesson learned with the back of one only just too much weight with the loader off getting out of the sea can okay so it sounds like you know got a great little storage area here we can keep his loader out of the weather all winter but he has a ramp that's built up to the storage unit you know so there's a change in elevation now the good thing Think about this, if you were just outside on a hill and you were not straight up and down the hill, say you were, say you were partially sideways, you know, left to right, laterally, not level. Okay, so that could be a whole different story. Fortunately, he was straight up and down, so both wheels that were still touching the ground were, were level out and balanced out. But if you were sideways on that at all, well, then you could rock over to the side. You know, fortunately, he had the backhoe subframe, the bottom of that, well, not the subframe, just the bottom of the backhoe base that bottomed out, so it didn't allow him to tip back any further. Okay, now if you had a three-point attachment, say a box blade on there too, that box blade would ride up as high as it can go. If you had no attachment on your three-point, you could go to the back of your tractor and just lift up as high as it'll go on your three-point arm. So that same thing would happen with a box blade, and then it was, unless something broke, it would stop. It would probably stop your tractor at that point from going straight back unless there was more forces at work there. So, you know, I mentioned all that stuff in case you are in a, not the exact same situation, but in some other similar uh, set of circumstances, there's other factors to consider and be um, concerned with. And that's why if you're not going to use your loader when you have something on the back of your tractor, you know, it could be a brush hog, it could be a, a tiller, 
you got to have collar weight on the front side. If you're not going to have your loader on there, you need to get a weight rack and get a bunch of suitcase weights, get a bunch of other weight that's hanging off the front. You know, it's a safety thing to keep from tipping back like that, but it's also how you steer the machine. Uh, we had a John Deere 2025R here for uh, a while, you know, that we had an in inventory and that tractor, just a stock setup with the backhoe on the back and the loader on the front with a bucket on there was very hard to steer. It had very light ground contact that made it a challenge to just grip the ground and turn in a normal fashion. So you had to go very slow, had to make sure there was no rocking motion, no bouncing motion, because it immediately wanted to lift the front end off the ground. So there was very little contact, not like you're going to flip over, but the point being even a stock setup, you can run into that with. So I can't imagine not having the loader on there at all. And then trying to do that on the 2025R, it would have been impossible to steer. It may have just tipped the thing right over. I would have never even tried it. Now on the comparable John Deere 1025R, which is kind of a competitor to the Kubota BX, um, I found you can actually hang suitcase weights right on that black integrated rail. You can hang five 41 pound suitcase weights on there, even while you have the front end loader on, or you take the loader off, you can put the weights right on there. A great way to get, well, five times 40, 200 pounds plus an extra five, 205 pounds of weight on the front there. I've used that a lot when I'm pushing snow, when I want to have better traction on those front tires. I've used that a lot when I'm using a three point attachment as well. It just is a great way to get extra ability for stability and, and steering and just a safety factor all around and an efficiency factor. So if you do have one of those models, that's a great solution for you. I don't really think that that option works for other tractor models that are out there. If anybody knows, I mean, put a comment down below and let people know. I'm not aware of it though. Anyway, so let's see, let's see here how Mike decided to uh, get out of this predicament. He had to get his tractor down to a garage to put his snowplow on. So let's uh, let's watch the end of this and <laughs> and see what he does. No, I want your weight plate. I got this. Well, that is a committed wife right there. Nice to see her helping out and uh, getting that machine safely down to the garage to get the, the snowplow put on for the winter. <laughs> you know, I suppose there's other ways you could have gone about that, um, but that got that tractor safely from point A to point B. Point B, and you can see, you got to have weight on the front, whether it's a loader, whether it's suitcase weights, whether it's another human being. <laughs> you got to have something on the front of your tractor to counter that weight that's on the back of the tractor. We often think about just needing more weight on the back of the tractor when you're using the front end loader. That's just as important. We've talked about that a lot too. So if you're in the market for ballast weight, if you need to stabilize your tractor, there's a lot of ways to do it. You can get rim guard. They're a channel sponsor for good reason. Okay, they keep those rear tires planted on the ground. It's the most cost-effective form of ballast weight. Cheapest form on a cost per pound basis. It just hangs out inside your tires all the time get wheel weights on there, okay? Those two forms are gonna lower that center of gravity, keep it nice and stable. Oftentimes that's not enough though. You still have to put weight on the three-point hitch if you don't have a backhoe, right? Get a weight rack along with suitcase weights. Those are a great option. You can take them off, put them on the front, hang them on different tools. They're very nimble, move them around, easy to, to store when you don't need them. But if you're looking for suitcase weights, if you want hitch hangers, put on your, on your Spico or your John Deere iMatch, we got those as well. Lots of different ways to get ballast weight. I would encourage you to look into that, take that seriously. It is not something you want to figure out after the fact. Not everybody is as fortunate as Mike is. If you're in the market for another kind of tractor attachment or a tractor, we'd love to help out. Send us an email. We'll make sure you get the right choice the first time. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.